silicone mask. She's an actress who was cast. She is allergic to latex, so can't use that with her. So I'm just gonna sculpt another one real quick, and I thought it'd be good to show how to make a silicone mask from scratch. I'm doing a half mask. How do I do that? One of these. Not a sculpting video. I'll probably fast forward through most of this, but you do have to get a, uh, a layer down. Silicone mask, I'm keeping track of the thickness because the thickness is important to know because that's how much silicone it's gonna take. When sculpting, I'm using my hands up until I need a detail smaller than this finger. Because I need a detail thinner than that, you switch to tools. This is water-based clay. It is cheaper. It's, with a latex mask, you have to worry about shrinkage. It's gonna shrink 10% on you. I don't have to worry about that with a silicone mask. So I'm gonna sculpt this a size that I think will fit this actor's face nicely. We're gonna grab some tools and smooth this out and really get started on structures. I want a big nose. Silicone is very heavy. I'm gonna combat the heaviness of the nose by making it almost hollow. Shorter person, you won't see up in there. I'm gonna make two, I'm gonna sculpt two ears and I want them to be the same size. So I'm taking one block of clay, I cut it evenly in half and now I know that my ears are going to be pretty much the same size. I'm knocking off the highs and using the highs to fill in the lows. Call it done. will also do a little bit of smoothing out for me because right now I'm using basically what is sand erosion uh, in order to smooth out these wrinkles. It's also drying out the sculpture a little bit because the baby powder is going to take moisture with it. I want to rush in the direction of my cavitation lines, the lines that wrinkles would form so that any brush stroke is just going to be a micro wrinkle. I'm brushing with the brow, with these forehead lines, not against them. This is a one inch chip brush. That means it's one inch wide. I want to do one inch of Vaseline around the bottom of this. I don't want to do three inches or four inches. That's just me saying I'm a sloppy mold maker and I'm going to cause problems. I don't want to cause problems. I got 99 problems and a sloppy mold is not one. So the resin will stick to this, so I'm going to Vaseline this. I always remember that after I put the Vaseline in. All right. I'm gonna do something that's a little weird. Uh, I'm gonna burn holes in the eyes so that when I make the mold, some resin goes down in there. And then that's gonna be registration points. I'm gonna go straight in. Just a hole like that. Straight in, just a hole like that. Okay. Now, inside the mold, there'll be two posts that stick up, and those will stick into these holes. And then I know it's lined up and pushed all the way down. I have to Vaseline inside of those holes as they do not have any resistance. hole. Bitty Mold Supply, grabbing some supplies to make the mold and the mask. This is enough for a mold. Our cat, A, B, 
they don't have the same amount quite in them. That's what I'm going to be by weight. So that's what I'm using as art cast. And this is the brushable. So this stuff becomes like a paste. It like stays in paste for five minutes. But I can build up a thick mold with it. So that's good. Now, let's grab some silicone. This is what I'm making the mold out of. This is what I'm making the mask out of. This will go into the silicone to color it a little bit. And this is also silicone pigment. Okay, so the total for everything was $305. If you wanna know why silicone masks are expensive. Now, I can probably make three or four of that silicone mask with what I've got here. Still, you're talking my cost, about a hundred bucks a pop. I'm gonna cut this off square so that when I'm mixing, I can reach the corner of the cup. Okay, so that's 125. I'll just pour the other one in until it hits 250. Because it's 1A to 1B by weight. Remember, this is supposed to gel in 20 to 30 seconds. And you saw the kind of liquid that they went in as. I normally put my thinner material in first, the thinner viscosity, in order, because uh, it's going to mix easier and not stick to the sides as much. And now it's thicker. And this feels like it's kicking because it's thicker, but it's just, it's gelled. See, I'm always putting on peanut butter, that's how it feels. gel changes color it turns gray while I'm mixing and then it's going to gel and it's going to go back to that peach color sides bottom always scrape the bottom Well, I would say it's like four hours later. That's how long the resin takes to set. But we actually did the other part on Friday. It's now Monday. This has had plenty of time to set. It is really solid. Uh, this is one of the brushes that we used. Uh, this is part of one of the brushes that we use. Uh, resin is sticky. So now we find out if my... Uh, Vaseline did the trick. Uh, I normally give my mold a hug and I, you know, kind of brace and try to pull towards me. This may be the shortest video ever. This guy's not moving at all. Okay. There we go. what the back of the mold looks like. I'm just trimming off any of the resin that would be sharp. The styrofoam is weak and I don't want to break it, so I'm being pretty careful with it. Have to be gentle because that has a styrofoam head. Could break apart easy, and I'd rather use this same one for my core. Anytime you're molding something like this, there's a vacuum that happens, and 
breaking that vacuum is a real important part of getting this guy out. I broke the seal. I heard it. My face. Ooh. Here is my core. Now I have a little piece that broke off the chin, a little piece that broke off the eye over here. Pretty okay with that because I don't need the chin. Uh, and I'll just tape that down. Now we get the clay out. I'm gonna go ahead and set this in a bucket of water and allow the water to soften the clay and I'll be able to just brush it out. All right, so it's been 20, 30 minutes. Now this clay is all, you know, pretty soft. So I have a chip brush that I cut down. And I should be able to just scrub most of that clay away. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty good. Now that's real soft though, I'll pick at it some more. Okay, so uh, I have my mold here. It is cleaned out uh, and I'm gonna put some release in it. I'm gonna use uh, petroleum jelly. Do you need release with silicone? Technically, no. And this will make it so I have to clean this off really well before I can paint it. But uh, I want to, the option to get more than one pull out of this mold and this resin is a little bit grabby. So I do want to release this sucker. And I'm just gonna use Vaseline. So know that the Vaseline is actor safe. Uh, my go-to is like Johnson's Paste Wax or something like that. But this is gonna be on actor. So any residue, I'm gonna be safe. And that's why I'm heating the Vaseline to thin it. I'm not uh, thinning it with xylene. I don't want any trace xylene in this. I have some brave choices here. I've got some ear tips with a bit of undercut on them. Uh, I have my nose and the nose of this guy. Uh, remember it does that hook thing and it's hollow. So I've got to get that nose out. There's also a couple tiny air bubbles in the mold and those could grab the silicone. And this is just me sealing them up. You do not have to do this. I'm doing this to extend the life of the mold. I am greased. Now, so this piece here is important. I'm keeping this, this is a core, all right? This is gonna go into the mold when the, uh, when the silicone is in there. Uh, this is gonna be the void. Latex cures because the plaster sucks it up. It sucks the moisture out of it, leaving a skin on the edge of the mold. So I can fill this with latex, and if it were a plaster mold, then that filled with latex bit would, would be a mask, it'd be hollow. But this cures chemically, not because of any kind of a drying. So uh, we have to have a core. This also is gonna be against the silicone. This needs to be released. I'm gonna embed some straps in this. The way that I'm going to embed straps in it is with this Velcro one wrap. I'm gonna mix a small batch of silicone and I'm just gonna kinda of glue these in to the, to the sides. These four points, strap will come out of here, strap will come out of here, strap out of here, strap out of there. That's where my straps go. Part B of my silicone. Okay, this is a 50-50 mix. So I'm doing half at 1A to 1B by weight. Weight is 85. So my total needs to be 170. But I have some stuff to add. I wanna add some flesh. 
color into this. This is silicone pigment, flesh. That's plenty. This is just B. This is just the B side. I'm putting all my additives into the B side and I'm gonna do some red blocking. This is going to like the capillaries in the skin. So now my skin tone isn't super even. It's got that little bit of red in there with it. Just those little bits. Now I'm going to mix this really good. Uh, this is going to set up in about 10 minutes. I am painting these strap locations. Yeah. I double check. I'm not assuming anything. Have I done this a hundred times? Yes. Do I still run it over in my head to make sure I've got it right? Yes. Those holes that I put in the eyes line up nicely. The head is helping to hold these straps in now. Mix up the next batch. I'll go a little bit bigger with the batch. I'll go to 110 with a bigger batch, a little more flesh tint. Remember I had some left in this cup. I took this to my office while I waited so I knew when this was cured, this was cured. Now, I did not Vaseline the back of this. But I don't think that's a big deal. These real thin sections, they, they can rip easy. It does have a good stretch, but if it's real thin, it can rip on you. So even sculpting, I didn't do anything less than an eighth of an inch. pulling it the opposite direction of the sculpture. Remember the nose and how complicated the nose is? And 99% free aside from the nose. And now the nose is free. And we have a, a gross silicone mix. So now I'm going to trim it. Okay. It's going to be Vaseline and gross. I'm going to put it on. <laughs> now we paint it and hair it. All right. It is time to paint this guy. Uh, the only thing that really sticks well to silicone is silicone. So I'm gonna put out a little bit of clear, 100% silicone, silicone caulk. And I'm gonna tint it with a little bit of oil paint. This is just oil paint from the hobby store. You don't need a lot. And the thin silicone, you use naphtha. Now, I didn't want to use naphtha on the mask itself. That's going to be against their skin. Painting the outside, uh, we'll use a little bit of naphtha and that will evaporate off. We're just going to mix this up until I get like a nice paint. I'm using the lid of a contact cement can 
because naphtha kind of melts through plastic. Hence me not wanting to put it on people's skin. I'm just gonna test in an area that you won't see too much of. Just giving it some color, kind of catching in all that detail. Just that red adds a little bit of life, makes it look like there's maybe some blood under that skin. The red cap, will probably some blood on the skin. Super simple. Add a little color up here, a little purple, a little more silicone. I'll mix first, then I'll add my nap. these in kind of the shadowed areas. A little bit, we'll just dispersal around the whole thing. And once again, I will soften with the paper towel. This is wool. This is wool roving like sheep's wool. I'm pulling it to find the natural separation and length of fibers, and I'm cutting that in half. Working with small hunks at a time. Red cap. And here's the completed look. Thanks for watching. It's time for Patreon shout outs. For this week, I'd like to thank Dan Duchesneau, Rebecca Beaterwell, and Manla Deskins. Go make stuff.